Now, look, what are you supposed to do with a mouse? The situation is, I have in my flat a mouse. I don't want a mouse. I don't begrudge him the house room. I'm quite happy for him to set himself up behind the skirting board somewhere, ideally with one of those perfectly semicircular holes Jerry used to specialise in. And by Jerry, I mean the cartoon mouse, not wartime Germans. Their holes were quite different. But this mouse is not scurrying tweely behind the wainscoting. He's gnawing my cables and crapping in my cupboards. So I suppose I should put down traps. But then I'm going to end up with a dead mouse in my flat, which I killed. Or worse, a half-dead mouse, which I would have to kill. And call me a chop-guzzling, leather-shod hypocrite, because I am one, but the fact remains that whilst I'm happy for things to be killed for my benefit, I balk at killing them myself in my own kitchen. It's a quirk of mine. I could get a cat, but given that my problem is a small furry animal in my house stealing my food, I fail to see how the situation is improved by having a large furry animal in my house expecting me to give it food for 18 years. That seems to me like the height of I know an old woman who swallowed a fly style short-sightedness and can only end in me filling my bath with hay for my house horse. Of course, there are various sorts of traps that catch the mouse alive, but what you end up with then is a cross mouse in a box. That doesn't solve the problem. If anything, it brings it more sharply into focus. I could kill the trapped mouse, but I don't even slightly want to. If I release it outside, it will presumably, now knowing I'm not only a careless scatterer of toast crumbs, but a bleeding heart non-fatal trap setter to boot, head straight back inside, pausing only to bring with it a couple of dozen of its friends and relations. Or, of course, I could take it out into the countryside and release it there. Which sounds nice. The thing is, though, I live in London. Getting the mouse to anything like the countryside is going to involve about a three-hour round trip. I'm not dating the mouse. Besides which, I'm not sure this rural idyll is the happily ever after for the mouse that both I, and especially the mouse, want for the mouse. I'm unconvinced that a slobby inner-city mouse will, as soon as you get him outside the M25, twitch its whiskers with glee, scamper halfway up an ear of corn, and start making plans to take tea with Ratty and Mr Toad. No, I think that after 24 hours in a field utterly devoid of Bombay mix and wasabi peas, but amply stocked with foxes and owls, my mouse, and it's not my mouse, but still, my mouse is going to be as dead as if I'd drowned it in a bucket and not spent a sunny afternoon taking it to Kent. He's got about as much chance of pulling through as I would have if you gave me a combine harvester and a milk churn and told me to make a cheese sandwich. However, getting the mouse eaten by a fox is not a bad idea. At least it would be taking its place in the food chain, circle of life, and so on. Though I doubt the mouse sees it quite like that. And I don't even need to go to the countryside because we have urban foxes now. Then again, if I was an urban fox, I'm not sure I'd be happy to give up the roast chicken carcass in the bin liner in favour of something alive, tiny and mental that has the calorific content of a couple of grapes and may well bite me on the eye. So if you know what you're supposed to do with a mouse, leave a comment. Best answer wins a mouse.